بكت عيني بكت عيني بكت عيني على ذنبي وما لاقيت من كربي فيا ذلي ويا خجلي إذا ما قال لي ربي أما استحييته تعصيني ولا تخشى من العتب In this world we share nothing equally neither wealth nor fame nor children nor status everybody has a different share but there is one thing that we all share 100% equally the same and that is the reality of death no person amongst us has any more or less we have the same share of death kullu man alayha fan everybody everybody that is walking on the face of this earth is going to one day disappear kullu nafsin dha'iqatul maut every soul shall taste death and it is this inevitability that no human being can deny in their arrogance atheists even deny god and this is just a verbal denial their words don't change the reality allah is there and allah is al haq but in their arrogance they deny god but they cannot deny death no human being can deny this reality of death and this reality is something that the quran and sunnah tells us to think about our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam commanded us to frequently think of death. Akthiru, kathir, increase your thinking of death. Why? The purpose of thinking of death is not so that we become sorry, morose, sad. We become something who's always worried about ending. No, we think about death because in our paradigm, death is not the end. You see, for those who don't believe in God, they don't believe in Islam, they don't believe in the Akhirah, for them, death is the end. Death is non-existence. Death is nothing. So when they think of death, they become sad, they become sorry. This is as the Quraysh used to say, Allah says in the Quran, that the Quraysh used to say, In hiya illa hayatuna dunya, namutu wa nahya. We have one life. We live and we die. That's it. Wama yuhlikuna illa dahr. Time's gonna destroy all of us. Nobody will remain. But for us, dear brothers and sisters, death is not the end. It is the beginning of the real life. Death is the beginning, not the end. This life is not the real life. This life is playing. This life is, is, is amusement. This is not the real life. The real life, the life of the soul, the life that is eternal. When will that begin? That will begin when we leave this dunya. And therefore, for us, death is not an end. It is a beginning. So when we understand that death is a beginning, then all of a sudden our paradigm, we rethink through. Death is not the end. Death is not non-existence. On the contrary, as, as Allah says in the Quran, إِنَّ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةَ لَهِيَ الْحَيَوَانِ the dar of the hereafter, the abode of the next life, lahi al hayawan. Hayawan here does not mean animal. Some Arabs might think hayawan. Hayawan here means Allah Azza wa Jal is sigh al mubalagha haya al haya al haqiqiya. Hayawan here it is the real life. Allah says the dar al akhira. It is the real life, not this life. This life al hakum al takathur. This life lahun. This life laib. Because what is lahu and laib? What is lahu and la'ib? Lahu and la'ib is when we are busy, we are stressed out, we're, we're busy in work, we take a break and we play and then we come back to the real work. That's called lahu, that's called la'ib. We go lahu and la'ib so that we take a break from the real world, from our jobs, from our stress. We go outside, we play, then we come back in. Allah says this whole dunya is play. This whole dunya, that's not the real work. The real work, that's up ahead. But this dunya, the bulk of it, most of it, is not what we are truly here for. SubhanAllah, brothers and sisters, the entire community is shaken by the death of our beloved younger brother, Bilal Muhammad. We ask Allah Azza wa to forgive him, to grant him for those. This tragedy, he was barely 19 years old. And SubhanAllah, at the prime of his youth, and it is Allah's qadr, it is Allah's qadr. I was telling uh, Bilal's mother just a few hours ago, look, this is Allah's qadr. That 
one day playing happy and a tragedy happens and they're taken away. Nobody should think back about what if this, how about that? No. When every one of us was born, when I came to this dunya, when you came to this dunya, right then and there, Allah Azza wa Jal sent an angel. The angel blew my ruh into me. He blew your ruh into you. And that angel wrote down four things. Number four amongst them, ajal, how long shall he live? How long does this person have? When we were born, our death has been decreed. Nobody can change it. Nobody can move it backward or forward. And in our brief khatira today, I wanted to remind myself and all of you of what our Prophet told us about the journey of the soul and death. And we pray that our brother Bilal and all of our friends and relatives who have moved on are facing this journey. Because one time in Baqi al Gharqad, in Medina al Munawwara, when a Sahabi was buried, you know, back then, the burial, you had to dig the, the grave right then and there. There was no, you know, lift truck and fork coming and having it ready for you. When the body was brought, they had to sit down and dig right then and there. So one occasion when they were burying somebody, the Prophet ﷺ sat down waiting for them to dig the qabr. And in that 20 minutes, 30 minutes, he explained in the most detail ever the journey of the soul. The most detailed hadith we have about the journey of the soul, it took place in the qabr, in Baqi' al-Gharqad. When the qabr is about to be dug and the person buried, our Prophet ﷺ gave this hadith. It's a very long hadith. It goes pages and pages. I'm going to summarize and only give you the first half of it because he gave two journeys. The journey of the righteous and the journey of the one who rejects Allah. In today's short khatira, we're just going to comment a little bit about the first half and that is the journey of the righteous. Our Prophet ﷺ said, when the righteous person is about to leave this dunya and he's facing the next abode the angels come to him now this is when he's still alive this is in the last milliseconds the last time that he's still in this world his ruh is still here but he's about to pass away he's about to enter the akhira the malaika of mercy and sakina come down from the heavens and they surround him as far as the eye can see. Their faces are shining bright. Their presence makes him calm, removes any fear and anxiety. Looking upon these angels as far as the eye can see. And he finds peace and sakina. And then the Malakul Maut comes. Subhanallah. Allah doesn't send the Malakul Maut without the preparation. Without the angels that are coming to Calm the person down. The Malakul Maut generally is a terrifying figure. If you were to just see Malakul Maut, you might get terrified. But the righteous person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not just send the Malakul Maut instantaneously. No. Allah says, I recited in Surah, uh, I recited in, in the Salah, Inna الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا Those who were firm and they were straight and they believed in Allah as their Lord, تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ The angels come down in ranks and ranks and the angels speak to them and the angels say أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا Don't be scared and don't worry. Don't be scared about where you're going to go. Don't be scared about the future. And don't worry about the people you're leaving behind. Don't worry about your loved ones. No, don't worry about that. Don't be scared about the future journey. And don't be worried about the past that you left behind. Why? We're going to take care of you. We are your protectors. The angels are telling this person, don't worry. Don't be scared. We will take care of you. We took care of you before. We'll take care of you now. And so the angels calm him down. The angels remove the anxiety. And then the Malakul Maut comes. Now the person is not feeling scared. The person is not feeling anxious. Now he understands. He sees sees the beautiful angels, his soul is at peace, then the Malakul Maut comes and the Malakul Maut simply says, come out, O soul. Our Prophet ﷺ says, when the Malakul Maut says this, his soul leaves him as cleanly, as smoothly as water is poured from a jug into a cup. When you pour water, it just flows out. Contrast this later on. We're not going to do the rest of the hadith, but just to contrast one phrase. The one who rejects Allah, the Prophet ﷺ said, his soul comes out the way that a metal comb, an iron comb is pulled through wet wool. 
you know, wet cotton. Imagine how that is pulled through. They don't want to leave. The soul doesn't want to leave. The soul wants to remain. It's fighting. That's the one who rejects Allah. The one who was pious and righteous, it just flows out. It just comes out. And when it comes out, the angels that are surrounding the soul, they put upon him the kafan of Jannah. They put upon him the softest garments and fragrance of Jannah. The very cloth of Jannah they put upon him. And they send upon him the fragrances of Jannah. And they call him with his most beautiful adjectives and names. Whatever nice names and adjectives, however people used to call him. So for example, if somebody would say, oh, you bring a smile to my face. Oh, you are charitable. Oh, you are generous. Oh, you're so kind. The angels have memorized every praise that was given to this person and they will then use that praise and this shows us we need to increase those praises in this dunya. We need to make sure our friends and family know us with the most positive adjectives, with the most beautiful nouns and names so that when we leave the angels will use those same adjectives. Our Prophet said the best descriptions he was ever called in the dunya, that's what the angels are going to use. So somebody who was genuine moved by you, compassionate, you're so kind, jazakallahu khair, may Allah bless you, you're so generous. Every phrase anybody has ever said for the good deeds you've done, that's what the angels are going to say when your ruh is coming out. This is an incentive for me and you that we increase those phrases that people know us by the most beautiful adjectives and the most solid nouns and names. So the angels are going to bring him out, put upon him the kafan of Jannah, bring the hanut and the perfumes of Jannah. Pause here before we move on. What a beautiful, beautiful description. How so? Why? Because every single sense is being taken care of and given sakina and peace. The sense of the eyes, the sense of the ears, the sense of the smell, the sense of the touch. We have all of these senses, right? Every single sense, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending comfort. What the person sees will bring him comfortable. I see these beautiful angels. I see the angels, their very presence makes me feel calm. I feel confident. I feel comfortable. What he hears, the angels call him by the most beautiful names. لا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا وأبشروا بالجنة نحن أولياؤكم. What he hears is beautiful. What he what he uh, feels with his hands, the, sh the, 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 the shrouds of Jannah are going to be put upon him. No one has felt anything softer than that. They bring from Jannah. Forget the chief cotton we can put, the cheap polyester we can put, what can we compare to the kafan of the angels? The angels will come and his ruh will feel the, 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 the softness of Jannah and not only that, even the fragrance of Jannah. Subhanallah every sensation of his it has been taken care of. Why? So that he feels no anxiety he feels no fear, no worry and this is why our Prophet explained to Aisha that you know whoever is pleased to meet Allah, Allah is pleased to meet him. This is a Hadith, Sahih Bukhari. Whoever is pleased to meet Allah, Allah is pleased to meet him. Aisha said, Ya Rasulullah, listen to this. We are all scared of death. Is there anybody here not scared of death? Everyone is terrified of death because it represents the unknown. We don't know what's going to happen. Our mother Aisha, Alhamdulillah, she verbalized what we feel in our hearts. You know when the Prophet said, Whoever wants to meet Allah, Allah wants to meet him. If she were to be quiet, every one of us would think the same question. I don't want to die. But Aisha, we thank her. May Allah bless her and reward her. She said what we wanted her to say. Ya Rasulullah, kulluna nakrahul maut. We are all scared of death. And our Prophet said, no, ya Aisha, I'm not talking about that fear. That fear is natural. That fear is okay. It's an unknown. I am saying, when the angel of death comes, with the malaika to rahma the person becomes happy and Allah is happy to meet him. I.e., at this stage, نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ Right now, when the person sees the angels, all of a sudden, do you think he'll, he'll want to remain with me and you? When he sees the angels of Rahma, when he sees the delegation from Allah, as far as the eye can see, he sees those angels. Do you think he'll choose me over those angels? No person will want to remain in the dunya. Everyone will say, take me, take me. 
And that's what our Prophet is saying. The one who wants to meet Allah, Allah wants to meet him. At that stage, how do you get to that stage? We just saw right now, the angels are mentioning the positive names. Then what? Our Prophet said, they put the kafan of Jannah, they put the perfume of Jannah, and then the angels take him up through the doors of the skies to go up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This happens to every ruh, every ruh. It goes up to the doors of the skies to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, as it goes to the doors of the skies, every sky, every sama has a shut door. We know this from Isra al Mi'raj. When the Prophet went up, the door was shut. Every door has, sh has every heaven, the sama has a shut door. When this person comes, they will ask, Who is it? The angel with him will say, It is so and so. The doors will open and open and open and open. How does this angel know the name of so and so? Our scholars mention that the Quran tells us this answer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explicitly says in the Quran that وَالْعَمَلُ الصَّالِحُ يَرْفَعُهُ That إِلَيْهِ يَصْعَدُ الْكَلِمُ الطَّيِّبُ وَالْعَمَلُ الصَّالِحُ يَرْفَعُهُ Good speech and good deeds are raised up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our Prophet said, every Monday and Thursday, your good deeds are taken up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When our good deeds are taken up, they have the tag with our name on them. Every time we do a good deed, it goes up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it goes through the heavens. And it goes through the gates. And every time it goes through the gates, those angels see the name on that gate. Those angels, their memory, their registry is much bigger than me and you and they are monitoring every single good deed so they recognize the names of the righteous whose good deeds are going up all the time so when the person himself comes he's already sent thousands and millions of good deeds the angels know him so the angels say to Faddal go ahead you're well welcome we've seen his good deeds contrast this to the next part of the hadith which we're not going to go over in detail that when the wicked when the evil go up the angels do not recognize him because he's never sent any good up there. The angels don't know who this person is. He's never done a good deed. So the door remains shut and he does not go up to Allah. We seek Allah's refuge. But the righteous person, his deeds have been sent up, which means me and you, we had better be sending our good deeds constantly. We want the angels to know our names. And every good deed that we do, the angels will know our names. Every good word, every positive encouragement, every sadaqah, every salah, it will go up and the angels will know our name. Then the ruh goes up on until it is in the audience of Allah. Now the hadith doesn't say that the ruh sees Allah. Most we, we don't believe the ruh sees Allah, but the ruh knows that it is in the presence of Allah. And Allah Azza wa Jal will say, Uktubu kitab abdi fil illiyin. Write the name of this servant of mine in the high registrar of Illiyin. The Quran mentions the, 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 the high registrar of Illiyin. Write his name in that registrar. He has passed. Allah will give him the verdict. This is immediately when he's put into the qabr. This happens and the people are still around the qabr. And then the ruh comes down. But now the ruh is coming down away from the audience of Allah. The ruh is going to feel, I've made it all the way up. Why am I going down? So then the ruh will hear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself recite the verse directly in the verse. Minha khalaqnakum wa fiha nu'idukum wa minha nukhrijukum taratan ukhra. We created you from the earth and we shall return you to the earth and then from the earth we'll bring you back up again. So the, the ruh is given the consolation. You're leaving now, but that's not because you're going away forever. No, you're leaving my audience now to go back to this earth because everybody has to go back to this earth. It is a temporary going back. And then a time will come, will bring you back up, and that will be the permanent time. So even when the ruh is coming down, because imagine, you got all the way there, you think you've made it, then you realize you're going down, consolation is given, don't worry, everybody is going down, your time shall come. Then when the ruh comes down, that point in time, munkar and nakir comes. SubhanAllah, all of this happens in our worldview, milliseconds. In our worldview, we're still outside the qabr, putting the sand on. This is already happening at that time. And then, once the ruh comes down, then munkar and nakir come. And munkar and nakir, their three questions are known to all of us. Their three questions are known to all of us. Who is your Lord? Who is your Prophet? And what was your way of life? And subhanAllah, the questions of munkar and nakir, they are not questions of the aql, of the brain. They are questions of the qalb, of the ruh. Doesn't matter how much studying you've done up here. 
doesn't matter what you've memorized on that time frame when you are in the qabr your memory means nothing it is your qalb it is your heart it is your lifestyle so when the angel says who did you used to worship it doesn't matter what you've been taught in high school or in middle school it doesn't matter what you went to sunday school who was the one entity or what was the one being that you sacrificed everything for? What was your goal? What did you really venerate? What did you spend your entire life magnifying and making the biggest thing in your dunya? Was it your mal? Was it your jah? Was it your fame? What did you really worship? Your memory will mean nothing. It will be your lifestyle. What did you sacrifice for to gain? What was your final goal? So the one who chose Allah over everything, his qalb will respond. And I recited the verse in, in Salat al-Isha. يُثَبِّتُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا This verse is a reference to Munkar al-Nakir. يُثَبِّتُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِالْقَوْلِ الثَّابِدِ Allah will give you the answer and give you thabat. Allah will tell you firmly how to respond. Our memory cannot respond in the qabr. It will be our qalb. And Allah will give thabat to the qalb. Allah will allow us to answer. May Allah make us answer correctly so the one who prioritized Allah will say oh I worshipped Allah Allah was my goal he will respond then who is your Nabi again it's not what you memorize as a five-year-old no who did you really love whose lifestyle were you so obsessed with you wanted to model your life behind who were you really following mimicking who did you want to copy every single thing whose seerah were you studying whose lifestyle was it somebody on instagram somebody on twitter was it some famous hollywood bollywood star that you're always wondering and obsessed or was it a nabi al habib al mustafa who did you really love and so if you knew and if you followed the prophet وسلم, you will say it was the prophet وسلم. But if you had somebody else in your life that you made him the role model, you made that person, I want to be like that person, well then don't be surprised. You won't know because that's not the answer. It's not over here. It is your actual, it is your actual life that is going to give you the answer. And then according to what did you live your life? Madinuk here means what was your ethics, your rituals, where did you derive it from? Was your life in accordance with the Sharia? You changed everything so that your lifestyle was around the Sharia or you couldn't care less and your worry was capitalism. Your whole lifestyle was deen and dunya. It's just dunya and mal. How did you live your life? What is your ethics? And if you followed the Sharia, if you took the lifestyle of Islam as your lifestyle, you will then say Islam. But if you didn't, then don't be surprised. As the Prophet said in the next part of the hadith, the man is going to say, Ah, ah, la adri, I don't know. I heard people say things, but I did not do them. Notice here, he knows in his head what to say. He cannot say it. Because at that stage, it's not the knowledge of the mind. It is the actions of the heart that speak volumes. So the righteous person will answer everything. And subhanAllah, brothers and sisters, I've been a professor uh, for many, many years. I'm still a professor as, at the Islamic seminary. And you know, professors, they hide their exams to the very end. No professor tells you the exam. Can you imagine first day of class, I walk in and... Before beginning to teach, I hand out the final exam. I say, guys, this is going to be your final exam. Who's going to fail that class? Guess what? Allah has given us the exact questions. We know the questions. Yet still, many are not going to pass. We know the questions. They've been handed to us. We know exactly when, and we know exactly who's going to ask, and we know exactly the questions. All we have to do, fill out the questionnaire, properly live our lives, love Allah Azza wa Jal, follow the messenger, live according to Islam, we'll answer the questions. So those who answer it correctly, the angels, the munkar and nakir will say, Sadaqta, you have spoken the truth, and we knew you would speak the truth. The angels know, we know you are truthful in this regard. Then the angels angels will leave and a door will be opened up the prophet ﷺ said in his qabr a door will be opened up and he shall see what allah has prepared for him of the palaces of jannah of the rivers of jannah of all that is his plot in jannah and the fragrance of jannah will waft his way and he's going to smell and he's going to see the wind of jannah little bit is going to come in the qabr and so he will say ya rab ya rab allow me to enter so Allah will say to him, not now, 
after the trumpet is blown, after the qiyamah. So he will say, Ya Rab, ajjil al qiyamah. Oh my Lord, make the qiyamah close. I want it to be right now. I don't want to wait all that time. Allah will say, its time will come. And he shall be in that barzakh, happy and content and in a state of peace, marqad. The Quran calls, Ya waylana man ba'athana min marqadina. Marqad means our place of nap. The Arabic word marqad, it's a place of nap, of rest. So the one who is righteous in the qabr, he's just taking a nap. Because the real Jannah is right ahead of him. It's just an interlude, peaceful interlude. And then he's going to enter Jannah. And in this time frame as well, we learn, I did the long series of barzakh as well, that the person who is righteous, the good deeds that he is given, he shall know who gifted them. And he will know by name. And in fact, many of our ulama, including Ibn Qayyim, Ibn Taymiyyah and others, they, they affirmed that the dead knows the one who is visiting in the graveyard. I gave a longer lecture. You can listen to the two opinions. Ibn Al-Qayyim, by the way, affirms this. That the dead in there, the righteous, not the, not the wicked, the righteous. When you visit them and you give salam in front of them, Allah allows that person to know that he is in front. And you make dua for them and he knows you're making dua. And you gift him sadaqah. You gift him umrah. You gift him hajj. And he will know that so-and-so has remembered me. And he will be appreciative of that. And our Prophet told us that a person will be in the qabr and he will see his maqam lifted up for example he'll see his palace be even bigger even better he will say ya rab where did this come from i'm in my qabr ya rab how did i get this upgrade and Allah will tell him, this is from the dua or the sadaqah or the good deed your child has done for you. When you're in the qabr, somebody gifted you. I gave you that upgrade. So this shows us that even in the qabr, we can still benefit the people by doing good deeds and dua and istighfar. And again, the hadith goes on and on. But this is a summary of the journey I will face and you will face if we are righteous. Brothers and sisters, there's another part as well. We don't have time today. And that's if those who reject Allah, we don't want to be among them there's only two categories either you pass or you don't we want to be of those who pass our brother Bilal has moved on to his abode we sincerely make dua that he is tasting all that I have just described and he is seeing all that I have just described we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive him and exalt his ranks remember our Prophet said brothers and sisters that uh, a janazah passed by and the people praised the person made dua for the person said what a you know what a good person he was and the Prophet ﷺ said, Wajabat, this has come true. They said, What do you mean? He said, Antum Shuhadaullahi fil ard. You are Allah's witnesses in this earth. When you all collectively testify about the piety of somebody, this indicates, inshaAllah, we cannot 100% only Allah knows. But inshaAllah, inshaAllah, when the community, when a large group of people, when there's genuine love, genuine respect, genuine compassion for a person that's gone on, then inshaAllah, it is a very positive sign that this person is beloved to Allah. Our Prophet said, when Allah loves somebody, he announces, Announces to the angels, I love somebody, so love him. And so the angels love him. And when the angels love him, love is written for him on this earth as well. Our brother Bilal, alhamdulillah, his janazah today is perhaps one of the largest janazahs we saw, you know, in, uh, in this masjid, alhamdulillah. And this really shows, inshallah, a good. He was on his way to memorize the Quran. He was doing so much good. The family has asked me to announce that. They're opening up a sadaqah jari, a charity, an endowment in his name. Every year they will be giving to different causes, refugees or whatnot and so they want to keep the legacy alive but I have a personal request as well for us to think about and that is when our young brother at the prime of his age 19 subhanallah his whole life ahead of him so much to do Allah has chosen him to move on and inshallah he is happy and in a better place but we are still here let his moving on his death let his moving on to the next life make every one of us think about our own lives no one is safe from death. No one can predict when it is going to happen. How instantly, how quickly, from doing one thing to now, subhanAllah, literally, this is the reality of life. So let his moving on empower every one of us to think about our own lives, to think about that inevitable ending that we're going to face. And if him moving on causes 
each and every one of us to be a little bit better, a little bit more pious, to be more reflective, to think about this never, this uh, inevitable reality, then this is a sadaqa jariya to Bilal that is going to be continuous. You're changing your life when you see something else like this happen can actually potentially be gifting some good deeds to him without you diminishing any good. Allah gives to everybody. Allah gives to you and Allah gives to everybody. So let this be a reflection for all of us, brothers and sisters, final point subhanallah how often we stand here i stand here and we remind ourselves of the inevitable death how often you know especially during covid the last three years how often we kept on giving reminders subhanallah don't we realize the time will come when it will be your reminder and my reminder don't we realize this one by one every one of us we lose family we lose friends we lose grandparents uncles and aunts fa relatives parents this is the reality of life phone call comes so and so passed away what i was just with him wallah i just said salam i literally had lunch with him last week i saw him in the supermarket don't we realize the time will come when your name will be mentioned and somebody's going to say I was just with him and it's going to be me and you in the qabr me and you moving up and down me and you munkar and nakir our time will come as well so let us benefit with each and every passing each and every death let us benefit as our prophet said frequently think of that which will destroy all pleasures frequently think of death may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow our lives to be a fruitful and productive one may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the best life and grant us the best death may allah make our best days the last days and our best deeds the last deeds may allah azza wa jalla take our souls only when he's pleased and happy with us may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant every one of us the, the shahada to say la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us easy debts and peaceful debts may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our qabrs a vast place of jannah may allah make our qabrs enlightened and full of light we seek allah's refuge from the darkness of the qabr from the tightness of the qabr we seek allah's refuge from the punishment of the qabr we ask allah azza wa jalla to give us thabat when munkar and nakir question us we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open up a door to jannah to see our palaces of jannah when we are in the qabr we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to expedite for us the beauties and the blessings of jannah we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be resurrected with the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be sheltered under the shade of allah to be fed by the prophet sallallahu from the hawd and from the fountain to enter jannah bi ghayri hisab wa la adab to be in the company of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi jannat al firdaus al a'la wa akhir da'wana alhamdulillah rabbil alamin wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala abdi muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh فيا ذلي ويا خجلي إذا ما قال لي ربي أما استحييته تعصيني ولا تخشى من العتب وتخفي الذنب عن خلقي وتأبى في الهوى قربي فتب مما جنيت عسى تعود إلى رضا الرب تعود إلى رضا الرب